Hello, Brad Smith here from The Way. So a lot of people want to see God. They want to know God. They want to have a relationship with God, or they want to go deeper with God. They want to know more of God. Uh, maybe a lot of people feel like their relationship with God is kind of dry, or maybe even non-existent, or, or it's, it's lacking something. There's something missing, and people say they want to see God. And, uh, and though there is nothing prescriptive, uh, there is a hint given to us by Jesus in the Sermon on the Mount and the Beatitudes, which we're preaching through and working on this Sunday at the Way. So in the sixth Beatitude, Jesus says, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Now this is not a causal relationship. He doesn't say they will see God because they are pure in heart. That is descriptive. If you're a believer in the Lord Jesus, you have been given a new heart, and it is a pure heart, and uh, and that is given of us at the moment of regeneration that we might believe. He, he, he uh, prophesied, the Lord did, in, in Jeremiah and Ezekiel about the new covenant and giving us a new heart, and he does exactly that as uh, the Holy Spirit regenerates us gives us this new heart that we may believe. And so we have a pure heart. And what we see in this beatitude is it says, blessed are the pure in heart. So there's this marriage between holiness and happiness. It could just as easily say, happy are the holy. And again, God is much more concerned with our holiness than our happiness, but there's definitely a correlation between holiness and happiness. There's a correlation between uh, blessedness and purity. And we see that in a couple of different ways. Uh, one, we see that in the practical aspect of purity, the pragmatic aspect, that there's blessings and purity itself. In and of itself, there's blessings and purity. And what do you mean by that? Well, God's ways are the best ways. God's ways are superior to our ways. They're higher than our ways. They are better than our ways. And He has told us in scripture how we ought to live so why would not that why would that not generate you know a better life a more pleasing life a more uh, blessed life a more abundant life now maybe God has also likewise called us to suffer we're called you to suffer so that is a possibility and we know that scripture does tell us that uh, suffering on behalf of Christ is a reality uh, but nevertheless, there are great practical uh, benefits uh, and, and happiness and blessing in purity itself. And I can give you a couple of examples. Uh, take the human body. You know, what is the number one cause of death of people in the United States? Well, it's, uh, it's easy. It's heart disease. Heart disease is the number one killer of Americans. It blows away just about anything else. And the primary causes of heart disease are poor diet and a lack of activity. Let me say those in a different way. The primary causes of heart disease, the number one killer of people in the United States, is uh, gluttony and slothfulness. It's me taking the, the temple of God that is the body that's given to us uh, to be a vehicle to transport our hands that we may work for God and our mouths that we may proclaim the message. We've taken this temple of God and we've defamed it with gluttony and eating and consuming you know, vast quantities of food that are horrible for it, and in our slothfulness, just sitting around on our rear ends doing nothing, and therefore we develop heart disease. Conversely, if we were to treat our bodies as God calls us to treat our bodies, we would have far less of, of things uh, like heart disease or even diabetes or other things like that. We see that in drug addiction, you know. Uh, when I abuse my body with drugs or alcohol or whatever, I mean, that causes great, great affliction uh, and great heartache. And I, I've never seen anybody that's like, you know what, I'm so glad I started using drugs so many years ago. Or I'm so glad I started uh, drinking alcohol to excess so many years ago. It's just been a blessing to me. No, nobody ever says that. And what we see is, uh, conversely, when we abstain from those things, there's blessings in our purity. It's a, it's a practical blessing in our purity. But that's not the greatest blessing because there's always more. There's always more with the Lord. The greatest blessing He gives to us, just like last week we talked about being satisfied. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness because they will be satisfied. He satisfies us in a number of different ways, but the greatest ways He satisfies us is by giving us Himself. 
He doesn't give us comfort. He gives us the comforter. He doesn't give us peace. He gives us the prince of peace. He doesn't just give us righteousness. He gives us he who is righteous. And it is a blessing to us that we actually have God. And uh, by the way, I'm sitting in a horrible traffic jam here. I ought to, I ought to bust a 360 and get out of here. I think I'm getting ready to in just a minute. Uh, but we have this tremendous blessing in the pragmatic aspect of pursuing purity. But even more than that, he says that the blessing, the real blessing is they will see God. We will see God. Now there is an ultimate, ultimate fulfillment in our seeing God. And that ultimate fulfillment is found in death at, at, at either our death or at the second coming when we will see God when we will stand before God when when we will behold him and hear those wonderful amazing words well done my good and faithful servant so there is a practical application to us seeing God and it is future but there is a now fulfillment as well it's all it's already but not yet so there is a, a means to see God now and that is not by our holiness but that is in our holiness in our purity so let me see if I can give you an example of this so perhaps marriage you know take marriage the, the marriage covenant is designed to be a, a mingling of souls a cleaving together of two lives of two pure hearts in marriage and, and, and what we see though is that there's corruption that happens and and people bring in baggage into marriage or they have they allow sin to exist in their lives so they build up calluses on their heart that hinders the mingling of souls it hinders the cleaving together of the man and the woman there's a wedge that we allow to be driven between us but when but when you exist in purity in that relationship when you honor your wife in purity when you honor your husband in purity you can truly cling together you can truly cleave together and you see God in that relationship I mean the marriage relationship itself is a picture of Christ in the church and so what we see is we see blessed and intimate fellowship we see true intimacy we see real communion between the man and the woman who are pure in hearts as they mold and cleave their hearts together and we see God in that relationship and even more than that we show God in that relationship so yes there's a future fulfillment to me seeing God and, and that ultimate blessing is I will see God and, and hear well done good and faithful servant but I can see God now in purity not because of my purity but in my purity and in my pursuit of purity I can see God in so many different ways and it makes sense it makes sense I can never approach God impurely I mean much of the Old Testament the sacrificial system the other aspects of the Old Testament law speak to purity and that I cannot come before God in an impure way, in an impure fashion. So why would that not be the case to see God? And so this weekend at The Way, we're going to be talking about being blessed by purity. Blessed by purity. So if you're in Clarksville, come see us at The Way. Otherwise, find a church and get there. And hey, if you're a man, as always, take your families to church. God bless.